So, you've got yourself a Sega Master System Mark II. Personally, I prefer this over the Mark I. Aesthetically, anyway. There is a major difference between the two. The Mark II has an RF connection only for audio and video output, which does limit you when it comes to plugging your console into a TV. However, I've modified this console so it does now have a composite output, as you can see here. This, I'll explain another day in another video. I learned, in fact, there are actually two different video encoder chips inside the Mark II Master Systems. The most common being the Sony CXA 1145P, and there is a plethora of videos and information online about how to AV mod these. However, I have the less common Fujitsu MB3514 chip. Um, there isn't very much information about when it comes to modifying these, but the process is actually very, very similar. The only way to tell which chip you have is to physically open up the console yourself and have a look inside. I actually carried out the mod before I thought about doing this video. So this video will be a mix of stills and video I've recently taken to show you how to do the mod. Uh, it all makes sense, it's not too complicated, just make sure you've got all your tools and components ready before you start. On the face of it, the Master System is a simple console to open up. You can see the three RCA jacks I've already installed on the right hand side of the console. The RF output and the power jack in is on the left hand side. When you flip the console over you will see five Phillips head screws holding the two halves of the case together. Unscrew all five screws. Flip the console back over and lift the top cover off. The reset and power switch will stay in the top half of the case, so there's no need to worry about losing these. Here are the three RCA plugs, video out and two audio outs. The wiring for the plugs runs down towards the left side of the console under the RF shields. Remove the screws which hold the RF shield in place and wiggle the shielding off and out of the way. This was a little awkward to do since I'd already installed the RCA plugs. Once you have the top RF shield off, you'll then be able to see which video encoder chip you have. The most common is the Sony CXA1145P chip. But if you're like me and you have this Fujitsu MB3514 chip, this appears to be the least common of the two, so I'll show you how to complete this mod. You'll need to remove the board and the lower RF shield from the case to complete this mod. Remove the two screws which sit either side of the cartridge connector. Wiggle the board and the lower RF shield up and out of the way of the lower console case. You'll now be able to remove the shield. Leave the board face down so you can now work on the underside of the board. With the case now separated, you can mark and drill three holes for your RCA plugs. The position of these doesn't matter too much, but somewhere on the right is ideal. This shows where you will solder your wires to. We shall refer to the edge of the board where the power, input and the RF jack is as the top edge. The black wire is the ground, the brown is the audio feed and the red is the video feed. Each wire has been heat shrunk to prevent from shorts. Near the top edge you will find the solder points for the Fujitsu chip. This is the video feed which you will need to solder your resistor to. This is where you will take your audio feed from. I use some three wire ribbon cable to perform this mod. Separate the wires, strip the ends and tint the wire with solder. Solder your resistor to the video feed. It doesn't matter which lead of the resistor you solder to the board due to resistors not having a polarity. Solder your wire to the opposite end and heat shrink the lock. Next, solder a wire onto the audio feed and once again heat shrink this. This is the common ground. This sits at the top of the board. Use this as your ground point and don't forget to heat shrink here too. You've now finished working on the underside of the board. Put the board back into the lower RF shield and put it all back into the lower half of the case. Screw all three of your RCA plugs into the case so they are finger tight. Here you can see the capacitor soldered to the yellow video plug. You will need to solder the short lead of the capacitor to the middle pin of the RCA jack. Capacitors are polarised so the short lead is the negative lead and the long lead is the positive. Solder your wire from the video feed onto the positive lead of the capacitor and once again heat shrink this. Attach the wire which you soldered to the common ground on the board to all three jacks. 
The master system only outputs mono audio, so you will need to connect your audio feed to both a red and white jack. Do this by bridging both of these with a small length of wire. Once you've done all this, tuck your wires out of the way neatly inside the console and put the console back together. You will now have two mono audio outs and a video out via composite. And there you have it, your Sega Master System Mark II can now be connected to any device with a composite input, so all that's left to do is play some classic Sega 8-bit games. Thanks for watching.